Archaeologists occasionally uncover strange granite cylinders in Egypt that fascinate and impress the public. What was the purpose of these mysterious objects? How could they be made in such a hard rock without modern equipment? Is this the proof of the use of an advanced technology that rivals with our current tools? Since the dawn of times, humans have enjoyed making holes here and there. As early as the Paleolithic, humans routinely perforated shells, bones or even teeth, notably to decorate their necklaces or bracelets. These objects were usually drilled with flint tips which were spun around. The extreme hardness of flint, which is 8 on the Mohs hardness scale, enables it to tackle the hardest of stones. Drilling techniques have leapt forward with the adoption of the arc, allowing for a much faster rotation. Even today, some tribes still use this technique, as for instance in India and Cambay. With the Neolithic Revolution, craftsmen began to use abrasive materials, such as sand, to work with hard stones more efficiently. Sand is made up of grains resulting from the disintegration of different minerals, some being extremely hard like quartz, which has a hardness higher than that of granite, 7 moles against 6 moles. Around 4000 BCE, the coming of the Bronze Age brought new technological advances. With the introduction of a hollow rod made of soft metal or wood allowing the boring of rocks, a technique used in particular to hollow out a stone. Copper was often used to make the tube. The soft metal was easy to work with and once worn out could be hammered and reused, unlike wood. When using a hollow rod, it is not the tube itself that grinds the rock, but the abrasive grains it will compress against the stone. The grains are of mixed sizes and they clump up in clusters, leaving behind them concentric grooves that are distinctive of this method. The same type of grooves, this time perpendicular to the cut, are found when using a saw combined with sanding material. In addition to sand, Bronze Age craftsmen also began to use emery or corundum as an additive to the abrasive mixture, which made it even more effective on hard stones. The drill pipe could also be coated with wax to hold abrasive particles more effectively and further increase efficiency. Once the grooves were carved by the tube, the middle part of the rock that remained intact was removed to obtain a borehole. And so the mysterious striped cylinders found by archaeologists are simply the byproducts of this technique. The Egyptians used this method to hollow out sarcophagi and also in the making of stone vessels. In order to confirm those drilling techniques, experimental archaeology regularly conducts field and laboratory experiments. It is then a question of reconstructing the same tools according to the methods and materials of the time in order to test them on site. In 2003, archaeologist Dennis Stocks published a book outlining the result of 30 years of experimenting with stone, metal and woodworking techniques in ancient Egypt. Based on many archaeological elements, he reconstructed the presumed tools of the time and then demonstrated the effectiveness of this method. In 2014, the French archaeologist Elise Morero also began to reconstruct ancient techniques for making stone vessels. Those cylindrical byproducts have not only been found in Egypt, but throughout the Mediterranean region. In addition to copper tubes, she also tested the effectiveness of wax coated reed tubes. In 2010, Russian builder Nikolai Vasutin, an avid enthusiast of experimental archaeology, put to the test the boring of granite with a manual drill equipped with a copper tube, replicating the one used by ancient Egyptians. He achieved results remarkably similar to those Egyptian boreholes, cylinders with regular grooves and a diameter that gets narrower with depth. He also found that the depth of the groove varied with the grain size of the sanding material used. The nature of the sanding material also plays a role. Sand alone produces smoother surfaces and less homogeneous spiral grooves, while the use of corundum results in more pronounced and concentric grooves. Since 2016, he has regularly renewed the experiment through YouTube videos or before an audience at his conferences on antique technologies study.
archaeological evidence coupled with field experiment allow us to understand how, with often rudimentary means, man has been able to show ingenuity in developing objects and monuments that still fascinate us today.